Hold on. Hey, hey, check this out, y'all. Because I, I love, I love the hypocrisies. I love the double standards. I love it all across the board. The Golden State Warriors lost the game where they had the 30, a 31-point lead last night. 31-point lead, and they still lost the game. Right? Now, they're ultimately still going to win this series. I believe they're going to win the next game in critical fashion. I believe the Clippers may win one more game in the Staples Center. But last night, Sweet Lou, Patrick Beverly, um, what's my boy in them name, man? Oh, Montrez Harrell, what, Landry Shamit? Is that there? Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Shamit, our last name, I believe. Man, them, them boys was hooping. Them boys hooped and came back and won. And you know what I noticed, man? Kevin Durant had more turnovers than he had shot attempts last night. Boy had eight, only shot the ball eight times, had nine turnovers. Fouled out of the game. They lost the game when, that they were up by 31 in. And no, nobody really want to say nothing about it. Everybody act like it never happened. I mean, not it never happened. Nope, everybody act like Kevin Durant didn't get locked up by, by Pat Bev. Like he didn't get locked up by that man. Like the man didn't have him on skates and took him out of his game. But had that been LeBron James, had LeBron James had a game where he had nine turnovers, eight shot attempts, fouled out, and his team lost a game that they were up by 31, you would have never heard the end of it. Never heard the end of it. So that lets me know that LeBron James is held to a much different standard than Kevin Durant. And why is he held to a much different standard? It's simple. Even though people criticize LeBron and he ain't in the playoffs right now, the man is still upper echelon. No, no matter what people say, they can say, oh, he's declining and he this and he that and he ain't that good and he overrated and all of that. It's obvious that you look at him as an all-time great. You all, It's obvious that you look at him as... Now, right now, of course, he ain't in the playoffs. You can't give him the label as the best player, but it's obvious that you really think that the man is the most talented player in the league. It's obvious. That's why you hold him to such high standards and you lower the bar for guys like Kevin Durant because you don't criticize them the same way, the same manner. I heard a, um, a YouTuber say, well, you can't blame KD because before he got fouled out, he was hitting some shots to help bring him back. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, he was, he was doing this. And what was he at when they needed him? When, he, when they needed him, he wasn't around. He was fouled out and he only shot eight shots. Only, only had eight shot attempts and nine turnovers in a game with a 6-1 guard Locking him the hell up like a correctional officer. So y'all tell me what that is. Y'all let me know, man. Y'all let me know. Overall, the Golden State Warriors, they, they were terrible for that. And Steph was, you know, Steph was, he was front running and he, you know, had the, that mouthpiece in his mouth. And it's all good. It's all good. Steph is an all-time great basketball player. The other, the other day, he had one of the greatest playoff performances in that first game that I've ever seen him play. The, probably the greatest playoff performance I've ever seen him play that first game. He did. But they lost this past game. And I'm riding with my boy from the crib, from Chicago, Illinois, West Side to be specific. To be specific, I'm from out south. I'm from the south side. But shout out to out west. Because Pat Bev put on a clinic, man, locking dudes up for real. That's his, that, that's his niche. That is how he sustained a roster spot in the league. Yeah, he'll hit an occasional shot. He'll get you some hustle baskets, but he's not known as an offensive weapon. He is a defensive weapon, a defensive stopper, a defensive irritant, and a defense and a defensive pest. That is his job, and he's gonna stick whoever it is, whether it's who it could be the best player on the team, LeBron, KD, James Harden, whoever. He guarding them, and he getting all in a grill, all up on them to smother them, to not let them be able to get off. He doing it to KD. All up in KD legs where KD can't do nothing. And KD really supposed to be shooting over that man every single time. Get to a spot. Back him down. Shoot over or turn around. Shoot over him. Fade away. You know they do that leaning shot like dirt. You good at that. Fade away on that man. But he taking KD out of his game. And he doing his job. But I believe KD will have a monstrous performance this next game at the Sable Center to prove something because he's getting, well... Because everybody, you got certain individuals who are saying he getting into KD head. 
they not they not clamoring or like uh, not clowning them, but they not getting on them like I did for their performance. Not a lot of them. A few here and there are getting on KD, but they really just saying Pat Bev is in his ear too much, and he's letting it let it affect him. People feel like you know you letting Pat Bev affect your game. You letting it get to you. So he gonna come out the next game and come out trying to come out um firing on all cylinders. He gonna try to come out guns a blazing. I believe he gonna have a great performance. But I think the Clippers gonna get one more game too. I think Golden State gonna win the next game. Clippers gonna tie the series, and Golden State gonna win the next two games after that. But um, they lost to Boogie Cousins was a big loss too as well. Very very big loss because when you got you know Jokic and Denver, you got big men that you got to deal with that other guys aren't skilled or even big enough to to bang with. Boogie Cousins is good for that. He gets you them buckets. Um, he can run the floor. Like Boogie, he can stretch the floor with, with his shooting at times. I believe Boogie is a very valuable weapon. And I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm really hurt that he he got injured, man. I wish you can turn off injuries like you can on a game in real life, man. Because injuries have robbed us of some of the greatest careers we could have ever seen happen. From Penny Hardaway to Derrick Rose to Brandon Roy. To Greg Oden, what ifs? A lot of what ifs. What what we could have seen, and we missed out on it due to injuries. So, you know, it's uh, my prayers go out to Boogie Cousins. I hope he has a speedy recovery, uh, a healthy recovery, and um, I hope ultimately Boogie is still able to get that money that he's looking for, and that um, his talent proves that he deserves. Because if talent wise, he got it. He got it, man. And uh, I was hurt for him. I'm like, oh, my God. He had just came back from the Achilles, in Achilles injury. So I'm hoping it's not as bad as what people think. And I'm hoping he, he heals and recovers swiftly. And um and 100% too. But, uh, yeah, man. Go to State. They're going to have to turn it up. And I think they will. I think they're going to turn it up. Because at the end of the day, a roster where Lou Will, your bench player, is the best player. And sweet shout out to Sweet Lou. Shout out to Sweet Lou, aka Real Sisters. AKA, I don't give a if they if they was real sisters or whatever, aka Mr. Two Girlfriends. Um, he is special. He's a special talent. And I told y'all Lou be cheating. Lou know he not a six-man player. He know he a starter. But he has set that bench roll. Cause he keep wanting to rack up on them. <laughs> them six man of the year trophies, man. He wanna keep ragging up on them, man. He like being under the radar. He likes sneaking up on guys and, and catching off and catching them off guard, coming off the bench, getting into a rhythm and getting hot. Cause everybody know Lou is a starting a starting guard on a lot of teams in his league. A surefire starter, but he had thirty six and what ten last night, thirty six points, ten rebounds, phenomenal man. So you got to give it to Lou. Um, but ultimately, a team where Lou Williams is your best player, it's not going to be the team where Stephen Kevin Durant. Uh, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson are guys you can rely on day in and day out. They got guys where, enough guys where if two players are off, we have room for another player to still have a 50-point game. All those three dudes I named are capable of dropping 50 on any given night. Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson. When your best player is um, Lou Williams, you know how much chance, how much of a chance you got ultimately. Let's be real. Like, I think they're going to win another game for sure. And they're going to make it competitive. But they they not beating Golden State. But it lets me know that KD, he still can be throwing off his rocker. And I know a lot of other teams are looking at it and looking at chops at this at the fact that this is going to happen. If P.J. Tucker can be, P.J. Tucker of the Houston Rockets can be the same type of irritant that Patrick Beverly is, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They damn, they damn sure almost got him. I think if Chris Paul was there, they may have got them last year. They may have gotten them out of there last year. Now, that's a big may. We don't know, but I believe it could have happened, truthfully. So, we're going to see this year, man. Um, but it's just funny to me, man. You know, one guy's held to a certain amount of st a certain standard. Another guy who people say is the new best player in the world, and Kevin Durant, he's not held at them same best player of the world. Um, those same best player of the world standards. And some might say, we criticize LeBron because he said he's the best player to ever do it. Y'all was criticizing him. Y'all were criticizing him before he even said that. And uh, even besides that, KD said he did. 
Y'all say he's the best player in the league. He's supposed to find out a way to not let that get to him and get the job done, period. All these excuses that y'all say people use for LeBron all the time, um, nobody wants, and I see those same people pulling out excuses for Kevin Durant. Nobody wants to address the fact that he had an abysmal game. He really did. And he shouldn't be having a game like that when you're that guy. So he's going to bounce back, though. He's going to have a probably uh, close to a 40-point performance this next game. They're going to get the win in sound fashion. I believe uh, the Clippers going to tie it up on like a, uh, what, a last-second shot or something. It's going to be like a very close game. And I think after that, it's going to be a bang-it-out series. But um, I think ultimately Golden State going to win that series 4-2. to two. The last few games going to be close, neck and neck. But then Golden State is going to pull away both games because of the separation of talent that is that exists between both teams. One team, you got Shea Gil Gildress Alexander, Zubak, uh, Sweet Lou. Um, dang, who else? I said Sweet Lou. Uh, you got, yeah. You One team got him. You got... Patrick Beverly, Tobias Harris ain't there, so no, we got Montrez Harrell. Other team we got Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green. You know, Kev, uh, Kevon Looney came off the bench. Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he did. Came off the bench and had what twenty points for them. So you you do the math. You do the math between one team chance and the other team chance with three future Hall of Famers on that team. You tell me what the outcome gonna be. Of course. Golden State is going to win, and they're supposed to win on paper, which is why last night it was a big deal that they lost after having a 31-point lead. The team was up 73-50 to 50 at the half, and I thought it was done. I thought it was a wrap. I'm like, I'm not watching this. It's over with. It is what it is. I'm not even checking for the score. I get back on sport, on, um, on social media. Some tell me, like, let's go just check on this game, man. I'm like, you never know what can happen in basketball. Let's go check on it. When I saw them boys won... And I'm like, yeah. Shout out to the crib, West Side Chicago, man. Shout out to Pat, man. I'm from out south, but shout out to out west, man. Chicago produced some very tough hoopers. Tony Allen, D. Rose, Tim Hardaway, a lot of great hoopers, man. So, but we going to see, man. I think this next game, Golden State going to win. It's going to go six games. Golden State shall advance, but it won't be easy. All do, well, not all do. Big in big part due to my boy Pat Bear from West Side Chicago, Illinois, man. All right, y'all. It's about time for me to head up out of here, lay it down. So, peace.